You're listening to a special interview segment for the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. Okay, folks, joining us on the show this week, appearing at Comic Palooza in Houston, Texas on Friday the 23rd, Saturday the 21st. Also going to appear at Coastal Mania and Wrestling Super Show on July 12th in Galveston, both courtesy of Clutch City Productions. Two-time WWE Women's Champion as Victoria, five-time TNA Knockout Champion, uh, also Knockout's Tag Team Champion as Tara, the one and only Lisa Marie Varon. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. We certainly thank appreciate you, so much. you coming I'm on. to... Um for the shit that comic palooza because I haven't seen Brooke Tessmacher in so long and it's our first appearance um, back together. Very cool. You yeah. know, since I've been gone from TNA, so I'm super excited about uh, it. TNT explosion at Comic Palooza. Exactly. Good. Isn't that just have this a great just a great sound? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So uh, you are going to be appearing at Comic Palooza. Going to have all kinds of fun. Um, you know, what are your thoughts about going to these conventions? You just, I mean, is it all kind of fun? Um, you know, with fans coming up, reminiscing of past memories and all that. Absolutely. Um, th- that's that's basically what I do. You know, I have a restaurant here in Chicago, and um, that's I'm here every single night. So it's basically a fan fest every night, anyways. Like um, I'm taking pictures, signing autographs, and. Um, um, talking about what I love, watching what I love, and making new friends in my city. So I'm I'm super blessed at the point of my life right now. You know what I mean? All those bumps and bruises in the past are really paying off. You know, but um, I I'm one of those people that enjoy. I really love doing these autograph sessions. Um, I I go way over and beyond. I don't want anybody to have that experience. So I like um, every fan or follower to have a, a unique experience meeting me you know what i mean so absolutely i, I love them I, I absolutely love them and also it's also um a reunion for me to um, you know to see some old friends you know at these uh, these conventions so i you know it's it, it kind of try to make it a little bit of a vacation just like to have dinner with your old buddies and stuff like that and catch up yeah. and find out what they're doing in their life so i i enjoy them very cool um you you and your husband uh went into the restaurant business together to open the, the squared circle in chicago how how's the business going it's going well this is our third restaurant so um it's nice we've had we had two more and um and, and we had a, car, a custom car shop, and then when we first got married, we had a gym. So we're not foreign to owning our own businesses. My husband's very stubborn and cannot work for anybody else. <laughs> and he's been a chef since he was, you know, 15, 16. He's always been um, with food, and um, it's it's freaking awesome. Like, I mean, our menu, if you go to the squaredcircle.biz and look at our menu, it's very unusual items. Um, I named a few things um, after wrestlers. Um, and uh, we do stuffed burgers and pizza made with duck fat, and we have adult milkshakes. And um, it's, I, 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 we do very well. You know, we, we both are workaholics. So um, I'm the front of the house, he's the back of the house, and it's, it, it works out really well. That's cool. That's cool that's, uh, you know, some of the dishes are named after wrestlers and stuff like that. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it, they always get tickled too, and then but then you get people like, why don't I have a burger after me <laughs> or a pizza named after me? Yeah. And it's hard to please everybody. Mm-hmm. And I was like, if you make an appearance at my place, I'll name something after you. You know what I mean? So drink of the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. But um, it's since I've had the restaurant, I've had like you know Kevin Nash is a regular. Um, he's been here three times. Um, you know with Jerry Lawler. Um, DDP, um, let's see, Honky Tonk, um, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, uh, Mr. Anderson, Brooke Tessmacher. Oh, my God. I've had so many guests come in, so I still feel I'm like I'm not out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's such a nice – I'm very lucky that I made so many friends in the business. It always pays to be nice, you see, <laughs> um, because they they're always, they're always support you for the rest of your life, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I know you guys are doing events there all the time and um, uh, special events. And I know uh, one coming up in June, I know you guys have a, a, a sweet and sour Larry Sweeney night coming up with uh, a lot of the guys from Chicago are going to be making, uh, from what I heard. And tr- yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. And we have Ring of Honor donating um, some gifts um, to, to auction off and all the proceeds go to a, a suicide um, prevention 
organization. So, you know, um, we're excited to be a part of it. His, his friend, Karen, actually she's here because it's indie night. So she, she lives in Chicago, brought the, you know, brought it to us and we're like, we jumped on it and we reached out and said, yeah, we definitely would love to be part of it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty sad. You know, it's, it's, in wrestling, you're, you're supposed to be this tough, tough, um, person and with no, no family problems, um, you don't really air out your dirty laundry. You know what I mean? So you kind of bottle it up a, a lot and it's important for people to know that they can reach out and have someone to talk to if they are under such bad times, you know? Yeah. Right. That's very cool of you guys to, to get involved in stuff like that. Yeah. We're, we're very lucky that people, you know, I feel very lucky that, you know, since I got a lot of followers, you know, I'm a very social media, I, I, I'm able to get the word out more so than, you know, you know, what Karen can do. So um, I feel it's a, you know, everybody should take a part in this. You know what I mean? It's, it's not all about m making money. It's, it's giving back to charity and making people aware, you know, Mick Foley, we had an event um, where Jay Lethal and Roderick Strong came in as guest waiters and we gave the proceeds, like all the tip money to Mick Foley's charity, you know? So it was, it was, it's, it's a good thing. Very cool. Very nice. Uh, we do have some some listener questions. Uh, this one's coming to us from, okay. from Thomas saying, uh, many people consider your early years in WWE to be a pinnacle moment for women's wrestling uh, with yourself, Trish, Molly, Gail Kim, Lita, Jazz, so on. Uh, he wanted to get your thoughts on what it was like to be part of such an elite roster of, of female wrestlers. It, you know, it's, it's quite an honor. Um, at the time, we... You know, we didn't think we were all that. I mean, we yeah, we were, we were very confident in our work, but we were perfectionist. And um, be before every house show, before every TV, um, we're in the ring for four hours working with Fit Finley, working with Arn Anderson, um, you know, Ricky Steamboat, all of them in the, the ring to try to better ourselves. You know what I mean? So it wasn't – we didn't have to do it. We were – we just did it just to – we knew our division – was growing and growing and then it was getting more difficult and, and we wanted the viewers to respect us as not just female wrestlers, just as wrestlers, period, you know? And um, when I look back, you know, when I watched it here at the restaurant, we you know we had the, the network and um, when I watched some old matches and I remember afterwards I'd be, in my mind at that time, I was like, wow, that was an okay match. And then I watch it now, I'm like, Man, that was a really good match. I beat myself up for like two weeks after that match. And, it, you know, we were such perfectionists. If one thing went wrong or something didn't look believable, um, we dwelled on it for a, lot, for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So I was with a, a lot of hard workers that uh, made the time and, you know, and got in the ring. I, I did watch Total Divas this weekend. Did you watch it? Do you guys watch? Ah, uh, we missed it. We usually do, yeah, but we, we, usually we miss, it was a Mother's it. Day kind of a crazy yeah. day. So. <laughs> there was there was, there was one part that I never, you know, it's scripted reality. You got to remember that too. Right. But um, there was one part. Um, you know, I guess Summer Rae's been helping Eva Eva Marie in the ring, and I guess Eva Marie didn't have time to practice. And Summer was like, you know, have you even gone over in this, any of this? Like for fifteen minutes, she goes, "Well, my travel's been hectic," and I was like, "Wow." Back in our day, I hate saying that because I don't feel that old to be saying that, you know. But right. back in our day, we got to a ring four hours. I mean, we're like, hey, you want to get to the building at one? We don't have to be there until five. Let's get there at one. We'll go roll around in the ring. Um, this ass fit, like, um, and our managers teach us a little bit more on the repertoire and um, work on our punches, work on, you know. We were always striving to get better. There was no excuse not to get in the ring because I have a photo shoot. Right. So right. I, I, it, it, that might be different because I, I remember going backstage and talking to Fit and I was like, I went to the ring and I go, where's everybody? And he goes, oh, it's changed. And I go, what? You guys don't go in the ring and roll around and, you know, and spar. And I mean, it wasn't just us girls. We would, we would roll around with the guys. Like Lance Storm was always there. Tommy Freeman was always there. You know, um, he goes, okay, I'll, but let me roll around with you too, you know. It wasn't a perverted way. It was always trying to make our division better. Yeah. <laughs> you, 
you mentioned um, just wanting to be seen as wrestlers um, instead of necessarily just being seen as women wrestlers. Um, what do you, what's your thought on uh, intergender matches and um, ha- how far do you think we are away from uh, an intergender match being presented as competitor A versus competitor B and not man versus woman? You mean, are, you, are you talking about a, a man versus a woman? Yes, ma'am. Um, at the back, when we were when we were doing those in the past, um, I was all for it. I mean, you know, guy, working with a guy is so much e- easier than working with a girl because they're so strong. They put you in moves that you didn't know you can put yourself into. They really lead the match. You know, they're, they're very good leaders. You know, like Eugene was really good. Nick Dinsmore was really good at making us look good. And um, but now I, you know, we you have indie night. Don't forget here. And I was watching an intergender match where one of the girls got punched in the face by a guy. And. I, I went, no way, in, the, in my restaurant, right? They're like, what? <laughs> what, what happened? And I go, a guy just punched her in the face. And so I think I got a little brainwashed into the PG-13, and it was a little disturbing to watch, you know, because when, when we first started, if I got punched in the face by a guy, I shouldn't move because they're, like, supposed to be a thousand times stronger than I am. You know, so... It, it, it is difficult for for me to watch. Um, I don't mind. I don't mind mixed matches like where the girl on girl and then the guy and guy and then teasing the girl about to hit the guy or the guy about to hit the girl and getting cut off. But I, I don't want to see a girl get punched in the face by a dude. I'm yeah. gonna be honest. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you did mention you know going to the ring before you know the the events and sort of rolling around. And you mentioned how, you know, Fit said that times have changed. You know, are there, are there any, is there any desire for you to either return to the ring or even make a return sort of as a, as a trainer sort of down like at the, uh, at the performance center? Well, I have heard that rumor. I mean, everybody that's been coming in every night, are you going, I, I read on the internet, <laughs> which we call the stooge, you know, the stooge sites, um, I, that you're going back. And I go, my phone hasn't rang. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I go, but... I have a lot to to give, a lot of knowledge to share. Um, I I think I can help a lot of the girls. I'm, I'm like whenever I watch some of the wrestling, I I text someone in the office and say, please give her to me for a month. Mm. Give her to me for a month, and I and I'll, I'll work with her and try to you know. But you know, I don't I don't hear back. But yeah. um, you know, I think they think I'm joking. But um, I never said I was retired. I think as a as a wrestler, you don't say retired because you all are going to always show up either back in WWE or in, in the indie circuit or, you know, so, you know, I don't let myself get out of shape where I'm not ready to go in the ring. Yeah, you know what I mean? You I just, think it's an ego and a pride thing for me. Yeah, you just posted a video on your uh, on your Instagram earlier today of you doing, like, leg reps and all that, and you know, something I couldn't it's do. It's brutal. <laughs> it's so brutal. And you think that when you're out of, like, you know, since I'm not in any company right now, uh, that you can kind of let yourself go. It's and it's it's actually the opposite when you re, when you when you're well, quote unquote retire or whatever. When you go backstage, you don't you know people are checking you out, going, I wonder if she let herself go. Hmm. So it's almost a little bit more pressure to stay in the same shape as when you left. You know, God forbid you age or your metabolism <laughs> slows down and you start enjoying the pizzas and burgers every single day. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, but it's it's. I think maybe for a woman, it's a little different. We have to, you know, still take care of our, care of our face, um, our physique, you know, our nails, our hair. You still have to present yourself as um, that girl that you left, you know, because people will start feeling sorry for you. And you never know when the phone will ring. <laughs> you never know. And that's like, you know, you know, you see Ric Flair, you just never say, Rick, you, you never say retire in wrestling. <laughs> you never do. Uh What's the what's the most important thing that you you think that you've learned being in the business of of professional wrestling? Well, um, I, for me, um, we were always walking on eggshells and always wondering: Am I pretty enough? I'm skinny enough? Is my move? Did my arm drag look good? Did did my match? Did people believe it? Um, did, were the fans involved? Um, I think when people think you make it to WWE that there's no more pressure, you know what I mean? It's it's opposite. When I go to indie shows now, there's a, 
I always wish I had the confidence level that some of these indie guys have. And it's like, because once you're brought up there, you are immediately put in position. You need to be humble. And um, I think what I learned is like, you don't settle for where you're at. You always try to perfect yourself um, and strive to be better. I mean, uh, you know, every match that we had, we never walked away and said, that was awesome. High five, girl. That was so awesome. I mean, we'll say, wow, thank you so much. Um, I had so much fun. Uh, maybe we should do this next time, you know, or, you know, you know, and in my day too, we were a little bit more snug or stiff or we lay these things in a little bit tighter so it's more believable. And um, it's, it, I think it just, you never settle for where you're at. You're always, like for me in my business, like in the restaurant, um, this, I'm still striving to make it better. Um, we're, we're looking to expand now. And um, it's, it's, it's incredible. You know what I mean? And life is so fast. It passes you so fast. I can't tell you that. Mm-hmm. Um. We do have another uh, a listener question from Lee saying, okay. uh, did you enjoy your match versus Trish at the Survivor Series in 2002, the WWE's first ever women's hardcore match? Did I enjoy it? Um, <laughs> it was an adrenaline rush, I'm going to tell you that. Um, her and I beat the crap out of each other. But, um, you have your best matches with your friends, and it's because you have a lot of trust. You put your body in their in their hands, you know? And her and I had the rule, don't say sorry, you know, thank you for the match right now. I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm going to hurt you, <laughs> but let's give the show, let's give the fans a good show. Um, I was, the, in that match, the mirror was supposed to be a finish. I was supposed to smash the mirror on Potter's head, <laughs> and in the match, she stepped on it on a, on a move, and I didn't realize it until I went to grab it, and I was like... Oh my God. Oh my God. And I also broke my nose in that match oh. from that trash can and um, shipped the tooth. And, um, but, uh, it, that wasn't the part I was upset about. It was, um, the mirror, the smashing of the mirror, because if you paid attention, I was yelling at myself in the mirror. The mirror was talking back to me. Um, I, you know, I was, I, that was crazy Victoria, you know, thinking everybody <laughs> thought Trish was better. And that, that, symbolism of the mirror smashing on her head was ruined and we had to improvise. I grabbed the wrong uh, fire extinguisher underneath the, the ring because it had a pin in it and she was like, let it go, screw it, just get in here. And I was like, I got it, and, you know, and I was like, and I pulled the pin out and then we just, and I ended it with a suplex. So I would rather have had it as um, with a mirror. That's what my disappointment was. But oh. when I do watch it, I just, my my heart rate races again. You know, I feel like I'm at Madison Square Garden and like all my customers here are watching it. You know, because they all request to watch that match here. So mm -hmm. I I play it once a night and um I still get nervous watching it still to this day. You know. Wow. One of the one of the most memorable moments for me during your career was uh, WrestleMania 20, where you got to shave Molly Holly's head. Uh, what was, what was sort of the vibe after that when y'all went backstage? Like, you know, was... yeah, I was nervous. Uh, <laughs> she wanted to be the first woman to get her head shaved in history. And so she was willing to put her hair on the line. I put my tie on the line. Um, when I was cutting her hair, I don't know if you noticed, you're supposed to cut it with scissors first <laughs> and no one went over. The guy that was standing next to us was actually Vince McMahon's barber <laughs> in real life. And, um, they, no one went over of how to shave a head, or I, <laughs> I cut her head several times. I mean, I was nicking her skin on her on her oh, on her wow. head, and when I went back, I I was like, oh my god, we're gonna get in fist fight. I know it. We're gonna get. <laughs> she's gonna beat my ass, and um, it was, it was a, uh, it, it wasn't that way, and um, everybody was pleased with the match, and we, you know, everybody was proud of us. But at the same time, I was like, I still felt bad because. You, you really don't want to cut someone open. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And um, yeah. cause them... Because we beat the heck out of each other during the match, and then now they cut her head. It was, it was really brutal. And then I remember them saying, we need her bald by the time oh. we get back. And I'm like, there's no way. And I asked the barber, I go, can you help me? And he goes, I'm not allowed to. I go, I can't do it. I'm like, and I'm smiling to look like I'm enjoying it, but I'm going... I don't know how to freaking shave a head. <laughs> it's so horrible. Oh, but um, she has a heart. She can't watch it. Um, she came out here for an appearance at my restaurant to visit. And um, 
I had it playing, and she goes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I can't watch this part when she got her head shaved. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so I guess, it, yeah. But she looked beautiful bald. She was, she had the face for it, you yeah. know? Yeah, she could rock it. <laughs> she did. She rocked it. So, very cool. Uh, who, uh, who was one of your uh, favorite people or favorite persons to travel on the road with? And, you know, do you have oh any, God, so many. any oh my God, I interesting have so many. stories? You ready for my list? Hey, we um, we got as much time as you do. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, I have Candace Michelle, Tori Wilson, um, Chavo Guerrero, um, with Carlito. Um, oh my God, we had some we had some good. Um, Gail Kim was one of my favorites. Um, ODB. I mean, you know, you have to ride with people because you're with them. 24 seven, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're driving with them, you check into the hotel and then if the girls, we share a room. So you automatically form a bond. And I think in WWE, I know I'm missing to mention somebody too, who I travel with, but, um, uh, I'm trying to think, um, Brooke but, Dan uh, jumping up and down on the bed. <laughs> oh, Brooke has my uh, Brooke, Come on. That's a given. Yeah. That's her <laughs> and I, yeah, it was, yeah. We were crazy. We were really crazy. But um, her and I, we never not, had to go out or anything. We would have fun, you know, in the room and telling stories and stuff like that. So it was like, yeah, her and I are very tight, you know, I mean, even still to this day. And um, it was, I, man, I did notice that, like, people in WWE have a little bit more stronger bond than I do with people in TNA. Mm -hmm. I think just because I was with WWE 10 years. And we were on the road four days a week, not just um, at the Orlando show or, you know what I mean? It was not right. together that much. But I, I, you know, immediately had a bond with ODB from TNA. She was one of my close friends there. That's who I'm facing in, um, at the Texas show. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. Definitely. Um, how, how would you compare the, the backstage atmosphere from your time in WWE to TNA? It's completely different. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, there's a lot of freedom at TNA. You know, I remember coming there and, and um, hey, what do, you want me, what do you want out of this match? Oh, you just do what you do. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I was like, not used to that. It's not, I, I, I was used to a little bit more structure. Um, you know, there's nothing like a production like WWE. No one is going to be WWE ever. And um, also, like, um, there were there were there was times and I, I found out I was on pay per view through Twitter, and I called the office saying, "Hey, am I on the pay per view? I never got travel, and it's in two days. I don't know what's going on." And um, it, it was just I was WWE. It was a, it was organized. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. used to organization, and you know, someone handling the PR department, someone handling our photo shoots. It was, it's very. There's a department for every single do, thing you do in WWE. And if you're lost, you don't know what, what's going on, they have a department that's going to help you out. You know what I mean? Right. And um, it's, yeah, it's, I mean. We must have structure. No <laughs> but I did have a good career in TNA. Mm -hmm. I had some good matches. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I wanted to go to TNA to face ODB and Kong. So that was like one of my dreams. And I got to do it, you know. And Mickey James and I, you know, had a cage match. You know, we had, I, had a good, I had a good run there. At the end. Not so much. I was a little bit, I, I, I didn't feel the passion anymore mm. there. You know what I mean? So, well, that's the difference. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, you're going to be appearing out at Comic Palooza in Houston, Texas, Friday the 23rd, Saturday the 24th. Hope, hopefully, we can uh, get out there on Saturday and, and meet up with Absolutely. you. I'm going to be selling my Squared Circle um, shirt from the restaurant. So, and my 8 by 10 but mostly. You know my my sweatshirts and my my t-shirts from and fanny packs which I brought back. <laughs> nice. Uh, awesome. but, yes, I did. I'm bringing it back, baby. Oh, yeah. I'm bringing it back. You'll see me rocking it because I'm very proud. <laughs> very nice. Fanny packs are awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're. All... <laughs> I'm trying to look for Zubas, but I I googled Zubas. I wanted plain Zubas, just so I can print my logo all over it, and um, I can't find any. Huh. It's so yeah, I, but they all have print or a zebra stri stripe on it, and I just wanted plain black ones. And then I ended up finding NWO ones, which <laughs> I, I want. You know what I mean? So, That's cool. I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna bring back everything, you guys. I'm gonna Heck make yeah. it cool again. 
Very nice. You're also going to be appearing at uh, Coastal Mania and Wrestling Super Show July 12th out in Galveston. And again, both of those shows are courtesy of Clutch City Productions. Our good buddy Gilbert hooking us up with that. Um, yeah, I'm so glad I met Gilbert. Gilbert's a sweet guy, and I, I look forward to doing business with him with, um, with the Clutch City Productions. He said he has a lot of stuff for me to do, so you might see my face a little bit more often on um you know, outside of the restaurant. So I'm excited for it. Absolutely. And for those who are going to cl uh, to uh, Comic Palooza, you can get your advance tickets now for photographs and uh, and autographs as well um, by going to clutchcityproductions.com. You can follow Miss Lisa Marie on Twitter at Real Lisa Marie. Uh, I know there's tons of others, but I'm blanking out right now. <laughs> no, it's okay. But you know what? I'm a Twitter addict. I'm a, I'm a Twitter addict. So it's Real Lisa Marie. Um, I am super addicted to Twitter, and you'll see me tweet probably all day long. I'm, I'm on there until 2 a.m. I have a problem, but um, <laughs> I read everything. I can't respond to everything, but I do read every, every tweet I get. And, um, you know, I, I'm practicing that block button a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Walk out the haters. <laughs> Yeah, it's just crazy. It's like, you know, like when I don't respond to somebody, they get really angry. Mm -hmm. And I, I wish I could respond to somebody. And then they start sending me pictures of them flipping me off. And I'm like, <laughs> wow. oh, no, no, no. You know? Wow. People so, that are crazy. Yeah. I just, yeah. <laughs> and done. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, oh, Lisa, it has certainly been a pleasure. We do appreciate you coming on the show. Thank and, you very uh, much. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you so much. I look forward to meeting you guys. And, um, I, I can, I'll start following you on Twitter. Awesome. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And thank you. have thank a great day. All right. We'll see you in a week. All right. All right. Have a good All night. All right. Take care, guys. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.